entire group. And we are now recording and it is April the 16th. This is a, a special mid-month call actually when Michelle and I started uh, thinking about these. We we're going to do these monthly, but given the current moment in life, we want to welcome you to our mid-month April 2020 call. My name is Jennifer Britton. I am one part of the Remote Pathways podcast. Really pleased to be here today, of course, with Michelle. So Michelle, good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. I am blessed to be in this, nestled in this hall with all of you today. Well, fantastic. And thanks for joining us, whether you are here live or listening in. We do record these, so if you don't want to be seen, feel free to take off your video. Good to see faces, though. And today is a topic we had planned several months ago. Um, in fact, our latest episode just released yesterday, episode 11, is known as getting up to speed quickly in the remote space. And that's something, of course, we've all been doing, whether we worked remote before, sort of mid-March, or uh, just started doing it. So welcome to our topic today, Michelle. Anything you want to say as we get started? Um, well, I think I'm just grateful for this conversation, So, because I think we bring some stuff in up to the surface you know, that maybe is under the water at the end of this call and it'll kind of normalize some things that we might all be experiencing. So yeah, and looking forward to that, that point. So the topic is getting up to speed quickly, but as we're progressing and most people are now like set up, they've got a bit of a routine. I think a lot of people are feeling a bit of isolation. And it's interesting, two months ago, I did a call for my effective virtual conversations book called No Person is an Island. And EVC I launched three years ago. So it's about having better conversations in the remote space. It's about how do we build remote teams. And one thing that we've seen over the decades, not just recently, is this sense of isolation. Now, some of you may not know that I spent more than a decade living and working out of the Caribbean. And so I was actually tasked for many years supporting programming across 10 islands of the Caribbean. And what I found really fascinating, you know, at first people were like, it, it must be so like, don't you get bored? And it was like, no, I'm always flying from one country to the other. And, you know, the interesting thing with islands is most islands, not every island of the world, but most islands have been formed by volcanic activity. And they are actually connected deeply underwater via, via these archipelagos, via the same land mass. And so as much as we might think they are separate on the surface, we are actually deeply connected at our roots. And I think I've, I've been holding this sort of metaphor and having this discussion with a lot of my clients who were all feeling the isolation, even ourselves, myself, who is you know, remote worker 101 for many, many decades now, it's a different sense. So really one frame we wanna offer up is like, no person is an island. And as you think about today's call, this is one of the reasons we're doing them, to bring people together to be in community and conversation. So we've got some exercises planned for you. Michelle, anything you wanna talk about with no person is an island? And I think you just explained it beautifully. And I do feel that connection. I feel that heart connection, no matter if we can't meet in person, I am experiencing that with many people. Yeah, for sure. So Michelle's brought an exercise for us today. Michelle, take us away. Yeah, so we would love to just, you know, we're stuck indoors, many of us. So we would like um, just to bring the outdoors in. So if you have a window, um, let's go around the virtual table and share something that you see outside your window. Just take a moment. If you don't have one, that's okay. Use your imagination. Pretend like you're looking outside the window of another room in your house. But uh, yeah, Jen, what do you see outside your window? So I see uh, a beautiful sunny day. The leaves are starting to bud. And I actually am across from a park, which is lovely other than the caution tape surrounding it because our parks were closed uh, about three weeks ago just because it could be an infection uh, place. So, um, but the trees are budding. And, and what's really interesting too is just the, the amount of birds that are around right now are fascinating. Everything from seagulls to of course the Canadian geese are, have flown back, uh, you know, little sparrows, little red cardinals. So uh, it's beautiful to, to look out the window. How about you, Michelle? I love your window. I want to see, but also the reality of that caution tape hit 
hard in the heart too, right? Like here's this picture of beauty, but then in the face of the reality too, that it's just different in a season of trend. Uh, I look out my window and I see my husband's truck, which is unusual because usually he'd be at work right now, um, but he's home today, which I know a lot of us are experiencing, right? Uh, a lot of our family members are working alongside us. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> it's just different, different. But now I'm curious about everyone else's window. Who else would like to share? Well, I mean, I have a window next to my desk, but one thing that I really love, we've got a bird that built a nest on our deck and we saw her this morning with a little worm in her mouth to go feed her babies. Uh -huh. So that's what we've been watching every morning. Um, but yes, mm -hmm. also um, the blue sky and a lot of trees that are you know really green so wow. when i when we go out in the mornings because tanner has some vegetable thing i'll i'll have to send y'all pictures later but he's a he's a veggie nut now so he's got some vegetables growing and they're growing and so it's it's really neat to see oh i love that it's i'm hearing the theme of the birds coming up right they're telling us <laughs> things yeah they're telling us <laughs> green is here I love it. Thank you, Lee, and I can't wait to see that. You're welcome. Um, I have two windows in my room. I'm upstairs in my office, and so I come up here and I open up both windows so that I can actually feel the coolness of the morning air coming in, and I hear the birds, and I see the sun, and then because I'm upstairs, I can look out over my neighborhood and kind of see the rooftops of uh, different homes too, along with the, you know, the trees and the sky. Um, and I love looking at the rooftops in my neighborhood because they're all different um, shapes and sizes and kind of some of them are unique and everything. So that's something that I always enjoy looking at besides the nature is just kind of the streetscape of uh, the neighborhood. So um, it's, it's, it's um, definitely my sanctuary to be able to just look outside and, and connect there. Oh, I love that. And we seeing those other houses too, I'm sure reminds you you're not alone, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And when I see the homes, you know, I just, it really does. It's so interesting because you don't realize like really what's going through your thoughts. Like prior to this, you know, I don't think that I thought as much about the people in the homes, but I think now when I look at homes and drive through our neighborhood or anywhere, I, it's always in my head that everybody, everybody's at home. Everyone is in their home. I'm not the only one doing this. We're all at home. Yes. Yes. Well, that's such good awareness too. Mm -hmm. And can I say your porch is one of my favorite porches to sit on. <laughs> I have a great porch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> love sitting on the porch <laughs> how about you pat what's out your window this morning uh, all right well the sun is not shining yet it, it's a little frosty outside um so i had a bird feeder outside and and the bird feeder has a little frost on the on the roof and i've seen the male and female cardinal out there today <laughs> and I have blueberry bushes that are blooming, and I can't wait for those to come out. Um, and then I also can see at the same little corner window, the other side is, is uh, my screen porch that I enjoy in the afternoon after the sun comes up and it's a little bit warmer. So I've really enjoyed the warmth of the sun lately uh, and just being able to be outside and, and enjoying it. <laughs> Drinking it up, right? And you have a yes. porch, right? Deep porch sitting, right? We hear the word deep couch sitting, but there's nothing like deep porch sitting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. And I see that Jennifer Grody is here. Welcome, Jennifer. We're playing a little remote game called What's Out Your Remote Window? So we're bringing the outside in. We'd love to hear from you. What's outside your window? Good morning. Um, so I am in my, my breakfast nook area of my kitchen and I'm looking out into our backyard and um, we cut our grass yesterday for the first time this season. So um, there's freshly cut grass and the sun is coming up through the trees and the birds are at the bird feeder. 
So just a beautiful, calm morning scene. Mm, I love it. I love it. It just um, speaks loudly to our hearts, right? Just the outdoors is telling us something. Mm -hmm. um, that good things are ahead, right? I have that word, Linda, this will probably ring true to you too, right? New beginnings. Mm -hmm. I, I hear. Yes. Mind. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, Jennifer, Britton, take it away. Where are we take going? it away. Well, well, thank you for playing with us. And this is actually an exercise I wrote about a few years ago, which has taken on new significance, right? Even before, uh, you know, self-isolation and stay at home, uh, remote teams. Anytime you work with remote teams, it's really interesting to ask them, what's outside your window? Because you can't see our context. So let's keep moving because we got lots in today. And I think this is where I'm going to pass again back to Michelle to take us through our roadmap. Actually, we, we moved through the Q1, Q2 phase a short while ago. So Michelle, what do you want to say on, uh, on sort of our quarterly transitions here as well? Yeah, this is something that really helped me in the remote space when I made the transition and that Jennifer B had taught me are these are like quarterly anchors to help me um, just find my path, find my road on the remote highway, because it can be a little disorienting when you're working in the remote space. So I appreciate these anchors, these focus anchors. So Q1 was all about focus. Um, so I would just write that word on my piece of paper every day when I started my work day. Um, and just thought about what are the main things that I want to focus on. And now, you know, um, we're in Q2. I found myself I missed the skip. I missed the transition because we were in the middle of this um, coronavirus, and um, realized, oh wait, we're in a new quarter. It's Q2. So I went back to these anchors and realized we are in the season of experimentation, uh, and how perfect for right now, right? Because whether we realize it or not, we are on a great adventure right now. So I like playing in these waters. Um, but this is from you. This is from you, the author, Jennifer Britton. What would you say about these things that you've taught me that you want to share with others? Yeah, well, you know, as I wrote Plan Do Track about a year and a half ago, which is for remote and virtual leaders, it was, it was you know, helping me think through, you know, in all the years that I've been a team leader or been coaching businesses or remote teams, like what are the things that really help us get traction quickly? And so it is like the focus. It is the experimentation. And as we move through experimentation, things work, things don't work, we learn, we fail, uh, you know, that can impact our mindset in so many different ways. And so beyond the experimentation, we also need to start digging in for the longer haul, which is motivation. And so mid-year, we'll switch into motivation and be getting you to think for sort of June, July, August, um, you know, what are the motivational factors that are keeping you <coughs> at peak? And then Q4, the mid, like the end part of the year, and of course I'm sort of going like a month in advance, but that last quarter, you know, really focused in on, on reflection. And what I love about what Michelle has done is using these as like a daily anchor or a weekly anchor. Um, I think right now, especially aligned with this theme of getting up to the remote work quickly, how do we experiment? What are we noticing? Are we even stopping at the end of the week to say, wow, what did I do? And what worked this week and what didn't. So keep that in mind as you are going. So with that, hopefully that's interesting. And let's go to the remote work check-in. So Michelle, back to you for a minute. Yeah, so we would like to bring your voice in. So let us know um, how is remote life working for you right now? Because pretty much all of us have made the shift now. Uh, some, not all, some are still out there on the front lines, but for you today, what are you noticing? We'd like to hear, how is this impacting you? What have you noticed in this season? We would like to share. This is Linda. Um, I, I feel like for me, even though I was already working remotely, I already work from home, um, but my environment changed because now I have family, <laughs> have my family here. And so um, it's been challenging season for me. Um, I've so enjoyed being with my family. I really have, it's just, I really enjoyed being with them. Um, but um, my focus has shifted and that's what, what you just shared. I said, I need that daily to um, really just kind of keep me on track because 
um, they've kind of taken the place of my priority. So work has kind of taken more of a backseat. It hasn't been priority. So there's deadlines that I have and things that, um, you know, I'm kind of pushing myself to the last minute until I actually say, okay, well, I'm going to work on it now instead of planning appropriately. Yeah. Yeah. And I re like you have, you're such a great um, goal setter, right? Like when you see that race before you, um, I love how you evaluate because you have that heart of determination. You're like, there is a way I'm going to find my way, even though this is different, you're really flexible and adaptable. And I really appreciate that about you, Linda. Thank you, That's Michelle. A lot. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? So here's maybe what we'll do. We've got some questions for you. Yeah. And I think what we'll do is we'll do three prompts um, in terms of reflection, because another piece that's key, just to Linda's point and what we sort of said already as a theme is creating these micro pause points. So we've got three questions for you today, just to get you thinking about um, some of these ideas. So I'm gonna set our timer for one minute. I'll give you a question, the timer will go off, we'll move to a next question. And we're just gonna ask you to take these notes for yourself, maybe take a minute, I'm gonna step away, grab my journal, just so that it's in one place. It's another piece I've learned. Grab a piece of paper. And this is hopefully something you can also be doing yourself on a regular basis. So we'll start with the first question, which is what's working? What's working for you right now? We'll move to our second minute and that is what's not working and needs a change what's not working and needs a change And then last question, what can you experiment with? What can you experiment with? All right. 
So thank you. And again, it only took three minutes, but look at what you were able to put down. And that might be a quick practice that you could incorporate at the end or the start of the week. Any thoughts, Michelle? <laughs> um, I'm just going to be vulnerable here. Yes, I'm going to say what's not working. There's something else spreading in the remote space, and it's my hips. <laughs> I noticed that I need <laughs> to move more. Ah. I didn't realize how much activity I was taking in every day, just getting in and out of my car, going to the store, just normal tasks. So I need to be more intentional about moving more. I need to integrate more movement into my remote day. <laughs> well, thank you. And we know that the, the art of public declaration is so powerful. Would anyone else like to say it or share something? Well, just what Michelle was saying, I've seen my front and backyard more than I have in 12 years. So it's like, you know, you just go out and just look and see what you can find. And actually, uh, Darren and Tanner had built a fire pit down below our driveway. So like last night, we went down there and just hung out and had s'mores, you know, down at the fire pit. So that was another thing that, you know, this whole thing has got us to do. <laughs> something, something I noticed yesterday that was helpful to me and keeping me slightly motivated <laughs> um, because I just feel like I've, rest, I just feel like I've not had a lot of mo motivation in this season um, is scheduling a phone call at a specific time of day, either once a day or twice a day um, with a, a friend, with someone that I really want to like, you know, touch base with, get connected, just catch up, see how everyone's, you know, doing or whatever. And um, just something that I could look forward to, to have that, you know what I mean? Just because that feels like a little bit of normalcy, you know? So that's something that's, uh, kind of yesterday that I just noticed, I was like, wow, that really helped me to have that scheduled. Fabulous idea. I love that. I'm, I wrote that down. <laughs> That's wonderful. I love Michelle, it. Michelle, what time do I need to have you on a daily standing? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two. Yeah. <sighs> love it. Routine Never get anything key. done. Routine is key. And as I've said for years, like everything gets augmented, right? Everything could get magnified in this space. The good, yes. the bad, and the other. So thank you. And again, please feel free to use this because Part of what we're looking forward to is like really focusing on some of the things that I think we're all thinking about, but maybe not taking time to articulate or appreciate that we're all connected. So last month, if you haven't viewed the video, we do upload, these are on my YouTube channel. So just look up Jennifer J. Britton and a Remote Pathways Community Call. Last month, we looked at what keeps you grounded. Jennifer Grody actually did a great exercise with us at the beginning of March that you can go back to our early March call. This month is all about like what's going to help you remain connected as well. So um, hopefully you looked at what's working really well in addition to what's not. Um, are there any things here on our list that need attention? Like we've talked about communication, but do some of your main projects need to be moved ahead? Do meetings need to be moved ahead? Are certain discussions not happening? And that's the thing that we're noticing right now certain issues in this mid, I hope it's a mid season of like extended remote work are starting to raise up, right? They're like becoming magnified, but people are still putting them under the carpet. And as a Canadian, that's something we would love to do. We don't, we're not like big on conflict. So we'll put it under the carpet. But you know, a lot of people's rooms are getting very full now from the stuff that is under the carpet. So, uh, it's a bit of a foreshadowing of where we're going to go in our next episode. So before we tell you what's next, yesterday we released episode 11, which was recorded before all of this started playing out a few weeks before. So it is about getting up to speed quickly, but the topics are really as relevant today as they were a few weeks ago. So uh, we covered five sort of key areas, like always focusing on the end result. Because one thing we know in disruption is that if you focus at the macro picture, the meta picture, the horizon, those turbulent moments, while they're there, they're not quite as, I like to say, they're not quite like as much as like whiplash, right? It's like, I could see the end of the horizon and in that bigger context, 
they feel like smaller fluctuations. At least it's a mindset shift. It may not feel that way as we go through it. The second area you'll find that we talk about in getting up to remote work quickly is making sure that you're being clear and concise. Uh, communication is key, as is making things explicit and clarifying expectations. When we are operating from different locations, everyone's got a different context outside their window. So don't assume that what's happening in your area is happening in their area. We also go in through some tips in this week's episode around setting yourself up for work success, finding that routine that works for you, and staying connected. So I'm really pleased that the tips that we talk about are very much what you've brought to today's call. And that takes us back to no person is an island, right? Like I think there is just a, a meta piece of humanity <laughs> that we are still so uniquely linked into. So Michelle, anything else you wanna say on, on this week's episode? Um, no, just we encourage you to drink it up, listen in, and again, we wanna hear your voice. So we think that at, you know some great things are gonna to come to the surface. So share with us, share with others what comes to the surface. We want to learn from you. We're not the experts here. Um, and also want to be mindful of the time right now. If anyone needs to hop off the call because we have missed that mark, um, maybe just do a quick um, thing and then we can show what we have coming up and some opportunities. But if you need to hop off the call, we completely understand this will be recorded and, and follow up with us. So. All right. Well, any, any comments or we'll do the two minutes. So quickly, key relationships to focus. Think about who you're in relationship with. Uh, this is this week's quote. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Thank you, Dale Carnegie. I think that's a great quote. We'll go to questions in a minute, but don't be surprised as you've been transitioning into this that you may be in the storming phase. As I said, those carpets are getting pretty full with a lot of stuff under it. We do need to address storming, conflict. And with that, our next guest is Gail Uday. And she is an amazing coach based out of Ottawa, Canada. She is the author of a book called Conflict is for the Birds. And so she joined us um, a few months ago to have a conversation. And she'll be with us in our next call at the beginning of May. So with that, Michelle, what do you have coming up? Yeah, I'm going to pass the baton to Jennifer G. Jennifer, would you like to share a little bit about our upcoming Stress Detox program? Yeah, so um, we're really excited about this. Again, it's one of those things we um, had been planning since really the beginning of the year and um, had no idea we would be in, you know, kind of the environment we're in right now where um, stress seems to be a pretty hot topic, just with all the uncertainty and changes that everyone's going through working remotely. Um, so we are launching our Stress Detox program. It's a four-week group coaching program. We meet once a week for one hour, and um, all the details can be found on our website at jennifergrodycoaching.com. You just go to the Mojo Life and um, look for our programs. And um, we will be having two programs each week, but you only attend one. We're going to have two groups. So one meets in the evening on Mondays at 7 and one on Thursday at 12 o'clock um, noon Eastern time. So you can find out all the good details, but we're really going to be taking an emotional intelligence approach to managing stress. And um, so not only do we want to kind of clear out the stress that we've been building up, but we want to help you to... Um, build and develop um, and hone your, um, your skills to manage stress, you know, long-term. So we hope that you'll join us. Exciting. So check that out. My focus continues to be on sort of two areas, uh, remote teams. So how do we support remote teams? How do we keep those conversations going? A lot of teams that I'm working with right now have transitioned out of that immediate, like urgent, how do we run? But now the question is, how do we keep running to keep the economic engines going? And the other piece that I'm still working on, uh, I'm doing on almost every Wednesday, a one day virtual train the trainer for people who wanna build out their toolkit to really get in the back end of Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting, to really use all the tools that are available so that our calls can actually be as rich, if not richer, than what we typically would have in the in-person space. 
We're going to also have coming up, if this continues, some virtual co-working sessions, so more info on that in like the month of May. And please come back and join us next month. We'll be back on the first Thursday of May. Uh, we'll ask you what's different then. I'm sure things will continue to shift, but want to say a big thank you for taking time, joining us for breakfast. So have a wonderful day. And Michelle, I'll let you sort of do final comments. Anything you want to say as we wrap up? Because I think that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I'm just giving you all big virtual hugs. I'm just so thankful to be connected to all of you, even when it feels like we may be alone. Um, and yeah, if anybody needs to hang on the line, ask any questions, please do. We're going to stop the recording. Um, but just thank you for being here today. It was a gift. So. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.